when you hear the words South Auckland? Is it positive or negative? What things have given you that impression? What experiences have you had? What headlines have you read? What people have you met? I asked my Year 10 Media Studies class this the same question last year, and some of the responses that they gave were, Hori, bare feet, jandals, gangs, crime. <laughs> so then we went to Google, and these were the top three things that came up. Gangs, graffiti, and poverty. Inspirational, <laughs> successful, creative, talented, diverse. These are some of the things that I think about when I think of the place that I live, I work, and I love. But I haven't always thought that. <laughs> See, where I grew up in Australia, everybody was white. The dairy owners were white, the truck drivers were white, even the chefs at Zangwen Authentic Chinese Takeaway <laughs> were white. <laughs> I grew up in a high socioeconomic area. The primary school that I attended was predominantly made up of other students of European descent. Um, I had no experience of other cultures in my entire primary school life until year six when this Indian boy moved into our class. And basically, because he wasn't European, he wasn't one of us. He was different. The following year, my family decided to move to Manirewa, South North. <laughs> <laughs> my norm had completely changed. I walked into my new intermediate school, Green Meadows, <laughs> and I looked around, and all I saw was brown. <laughs> I was the one that was different. I felt awful, uncertain, scared. As I walked into my class for the first time, I remember thinking, they're going to kill me. <laughs> Turns out the students in my class were lovely. They accepted me for who I was as a new member of their South Auckland community. Except they kept asking me to say things like fish and chips. <laughs> <laughs> Last year was my first year teaching. At the beginning of the year, I had a lot of fear that I was going to burn out and really struggle with um, behaviour management. My fear came from being a primary school trained teacher who now had her first job in a high school teaching 14 and 15 year olds. And I had never taught that age bracket before, and obviously looking like I'm 17 wasn't really helping my case. <laughs> <laughs> within the first two months, or within the first month of teaching, all of those fears had disappeared. I remember thinking, I cannot believe that I'm getting paid to do this. I had fallen madly and deeply in love with the students I taught. I was astonished with their creativity, their energy, their talent and their enthusiasm. So you can imagine the complete disbelief and heartbreak that I felt to hear that one of my students hadn't seen herself the same way. She was the most talented, beautiful dancers that you'd ever see. And she took her life at 14 years old. I walked out of that office in complete shock. And the reality quickly hit when five of my girls were standing there waiting for me, their teacher. I went to the Marae and I grieved with them there and later at the Fano's home. Prior to this, I had followed Brandon Stanton's Humans of New York and he was phenomenal. I loved his work and I always wanted to do my own version. I had the camera but I never had the time or the motivation because being a teacher is more than a full-time then seeing this 14-year-old girl who honestly believed that she had no hope or no reason to live, this gave me motivation. Thus, Humans of South Auckland was born. <laughs> Initially, I created the page to break the negative stereotypes of South Auckland. I wanted it to be an online medium that promoted positive things in South Auckland that were never making the media. Like Shaolin Rua says, we ain't on Broadway, but we real famous around here. Our headlines, Police 10 7. <laughs> I wanted to reach teenagers in light of what had just happened. 
So I thought to myself, what greater platform to engage teenagers than Facebook? I didn't really know the logistics of how everything was going to work out. I just knew that I wanted to tell stories. Real, raw, and relatable. I was blown away by the response to my little idea. Five to 5,000 likes in the first week. Humans of South Auckland started as a Facebook page with the goal of publishing a book in the future. The Manukau Career newspaper immediately caught hold of my Facebook page and ever since then we've joined together to reach families that don't have access to the internet or Facebook. Shortly afterwards, Seven Sharp, UFM, Frankie, a magazine from Australia, all jumped on board and things were happening fast and quickly. At the beginning of 2015, I interviewed a man named Sally Payer. <laughs> And I said, if you could give advice to a large group of audience, what would it be? And I'll never forget what he said. Three words. Don't walk alone. And after that, I reached out for help. And now we have a team of 10 volunteers who each help in their own area of expertise. Um, and, of course, you, South Auckland, the storytellers. Meet 14-year-old Dominic Lele. Dominic doesn't speak much, but her artwork is currently speaking volumes at Auckland International Airport. This incredible couple have struggled for years with infertility expensive battles. So they decided to become foster parents. They have fostered 18 children in their own sometimes up to six to seven at one time. In early August, they were able to give birth to their own <coughs> Heidi Tina Hughes. Oh, this is destiny. This five-year-old girl was born with cerebral palsy due to domestic violence in the womb. She was then given the opportunity to have life-changing surgery in America. However, the, the catch was it was going to cost $100,000. As we promoted her story, we watched as not only the community got around her, um, but donations were received worldwide. Geza. A woman diagnosed with stomach cancer who was told that she only had three months of her life left to live. She has an inspiring mindset, and while she's currently at the end of her journey, she still thanks God for every day that she has breath and that she wakes up. The exciting news is that I'm going to take a break from teaching at the end of the year. My dream is to print a book full of hope and pride and to get a copy into every school in South Auckland. The plan is to work on this project full-time next year, and I'm currently exploring options of how to make this possible. I'm not sure what the words are that first come to your mind when you hear South Auckland. Successful, talented, creative, <laughs> diverse. This is my version of South Auckland and it's been a pleasure to share that with you today.